Good morning, everyone. On this Palm Sunday, for the Passion of the Lord, we begin our journey of Holy Week, the most sacred days of the year, a great celebration of the culmination of salvation history through the death and resurrection of Jesus. This is our story. This is our legacy. And as we do so, we will be hearing the gospel today. We're also going to go in procession around the church with the palm branches that I will bless in just a moment that you either have in your hands or uh, we're already in the back of the baptismal font. For all of you this day, I just want to not only welcome you, but tell you what a joy it is to pray with you as we begin this holy week. Those who are able, please join me at the entrance of the church for the blessing.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks. of the assembly I will praise you you who fear the Lord praise him all you descendants of Jacob give glory to him revere him all you descendants of Israel my God my
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time draws near. In your house, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. He said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives.
Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen. I say to you this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And the disciples all spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this very moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The 
high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He's blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then, they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said it's not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he had accused and was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. And Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, 
then what shall I do with Jesus, called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. But he said, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes, threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right, the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders mocked him and said he saved others. He cannot save himself, so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, but the rest said, Wait. Let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Please be seated.
And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen, laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while he was still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people he's been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of my formative memories as a child was watching every year the Memorial Day ceremony. My hometown in Cumberland would have this parade. Veterans, and a legion, different people from the community would walk in the parade, the band would play. It stopped by one of the bridges. A wreath would be set. It'd be the military gun salute. We'd process out into the public cemetery. And there was a set program. We did it every year. There was the Gettysburg Address, the poem in Flanders Field, then it Flanders Reply. And then you know, one of the civil leaders would give a speech talking about how important it was to remember the sacrifices of those who've gone before us. Over the years, I went to it. I was one of the people who gave speeches and read the poems. My sister played in the band. And it was this awareness that we must always keep fresh and vivid before us, a clear memory, an account of what happened, because it's easy to forget. It's so easy to forget what has gone on before, to take it for granted, Kind of let it just get real gray and fuzzy and hazy. It's easy to forget the price that people paid with their lives, the sacrifices they've made, the work that they've done, the effort that it took. It's easy to take it for granted, to forget what went on before us. And so that Memorial Day taught me how critical it is to remember, to call to mind. The church in its wisdom does this every year on Palm Sunday. Because folks, it's too easy to forget this. It's way too easy to walk by a crucifix and look at it as a piece of art. 
and fail to notice the precious blood that he gave, the mockery, the ridicule, the torture, the suffering, the pain, the horror, the agony that he did for us. It's easy to take this for granted. It's easy because of time, because of distance, because of what's going on in life, the distractions we have, the circumstances we have, it's easy because there's so many things coming at us. And so every year we read this to call to mind what God has done out of love. To look upon the cross of Christ. And to recognize in this the instrument of our salvation. That he did this because this is where we belong because of our sins. St. Paul tells us the wages of sin is death. And so it took a death that God's own Son would put paid in full to our sins. We remember what Jesus did. That the reading of the Passion is meant to keep fresh, to keep clear, to keep vivid. The Passion of the Lord for the salvation of our souls. But remembering alone is not enough. This isn't a history lesson. It's not just a fact. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son. But this saving grace then is meant to come right here into our hearts, to renew us from the inside out, that the death and resurrection of Jesus is meant to change us. So we remember our story to be renewed in our faith. We remember what God has done for us. We remember the offering that Jesus did on the cross so we can go out into the world and make an offering of our lives that we remember to be renewed to live for the Lord. That renewal takes place within the concrete reality of our hearts, our lives, and the unique circumstances that we face in this moment in life. The people that we're around, the work that we do, the circumstances of how we interact with friends, neighbors, and strangers. That we make an offering to live our life in a manner that is worthy of this offering that he did on the cross. We offer our life mindful that if Jesus did this for us, then how will we serve and love, forgive and share what we've been given with those around us to bring his light, his love further out into the world today? And that means that we've all got work to do. It means that all of us have a part to play to take the Lord's offering and make it real in our lives to allow his grace working from the inside out to inspire us. We all are uniquely positioned. And so for the reading of the Passion to take hold, we remember what he did, but then folks, we've got to get down on our knees and say, now how am I going to live it? And if this is going to make any sense at all for we who claim to be followers of Jesus, then how will we allow his passion, his suffering, the offering of his life to help give us the strength to face whatever crosses we carry today? We all got them. And they change over life. But just as he was victorious in his cross, he will give us the strength to carry our own. It means that we got to name our crosses. And we got to set them before the altar, before the cross of the Lord. In order to make this real, I I highly recommend, this is Matthew chapter 26 and 27 that we just heard today. And it's going to be John chapter 18 and 19 on Good Friday. Take a moment to reread this account, to recall our story, the love story, the greatest love story. Reflect on it. And then call to mind what are our crosses and be able to say Lord help me Lord give me strength Lord just help me to take the next step Lord I don't know necessarily where this is going to lead but I know you do and so I will follow you we read the love story so his love in our hearts is lived out in the world we just got to know what we're facing May we today take a good look at where we are in life right now to ask the Lord for the help we need in his name to live today for him. God bless you all.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. We pause to offer our prayers this day for our needs and the needs of the church. That the suffering and death of Jesus Christ will strengthen the church in holiness and give her new growth we pray to the Lord. For those who are to be baptized and received into the church at the Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation will be a time of transforming grace, we pray to the Lord. That civil authorities will use their power to protect the poor, oppose injustice, preserve true freedom, and promote lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That Christians everywhere will live this Holy Week with special reverence, self-giving, and devotion. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That the Holy Spirit will guide the preparations for the World Synod. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, and an end to all the other conflicts around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the intention of this Mass, Que Rijo, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you know and love. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the preparation of the music, we worship the number four, two, four. O Son of Justice, number four, two, four.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For those innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, 
Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. I have announcements. Continuing to invite everyone to sign up for the parish photo directory and the chicken dinner. Information's in the back tables. There was a typo in the Catholic Herald this past week. I want to just correct everybody. The St. Anthony Spring Tea, a lovely event, is on May 13th. Think Lucky 13. The Catholic Herald said it was the 23rd. So remember, Lucky 13, May 13th for the Spring Tea. They're going to re reprint the Herald, of course, in an upcoming uh, edition. But until that time, please make sure you pass that along. It's a great event at St. Anthony's. They work hard on that. And we want to make sure people get the right date. All right, Holy Week. We have these three days called the Triduum. I know for a lot of people, it, maybe they've never been to one. It begins, it's, it's really one big event broken up over three days. Holy Thursday, here at the cathedral at 7 p.m. It's the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Some of you recall it's the washing of the feet. And then on Good Friday, a solemn procession of the crucifix here into the church. We read the Passion, John's Gospel. And we all venerate the cross of Christ. It's a powerful, somber day where we tell our story, remember what God has done, renew our faith. And then the Easter Vigil, that great celebration. It starts out on the steps of the church. It'll be the, the lighting of the new fire, the, the candles, the coming into the church, the singing of the exultant, the great readings from Scripture. Then those who are coming into the full communion in the church for confirmation will be blessing the water. And then after that, we'll be celebrating here at the Lord's table, Eucharist, and going forth into the night. And then, of course, Easter Day. If you go to the Easter Vigil, you don't have to go to the Easter Day Masses, but I just want to make a pitch for that. I also know that Paul is looking for a few people on Good Friday to help with carrying the cross. The thing is heavy. And so he's looking for 10 to 12 people who have seriously been working out. Paul is going to be up here towards the piano after Mass. And if you're at all interested, on Good Friday this week, they're going to have a little rehearsal around 1145 prior to the 1230 uh, prayers that we offer. All right, who's got a birthday in April? Please stand. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Your birthday's in April, bow your heads. I'm gonna give you a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you peace. In gratitude for the gift of your life here on earth, we thank God for the day of your birth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations to those of you in April. There's one funeral announcement that will happen the day after Easter Sunday. Tim Schultz passed away. His funeral will be Monday, April 10th, here at the cathedral, for the repose of the soul of Tim Schultz. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.